Hi Jordan, thanks so much. I really appreciate you coming in today. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Leanne. So we talk about uh, when we're buying property, we talk about pest and building uh, reports. They're not actually, it's not actually one report that we get, is it? No, it's not. Um, with a building inspection, that primarily looks at the structural components and the maintenance condition of the actual property. Whereas in regards to a termite inspection, that looks like or looks at the termite activity itself within the home. Okay, so it's two different inspectors that give you two different reports. Exactly right. There are other companies who actually in fact have one inspector who looks at both, okay. but there are also others with a little bit more integrity that look separately with two inspectors. Okay, no problem at all. And what, um, what do, how should I read the building report? Any tips? Yeah, with the building report, it's best to read it from start to finish. However, with a good report, usually the uh, summary is at the front, which would okay. outline all the structural uh, quotations and all of the structural defects with the property. From that, all the maintenance items should be in greater detail within the report, and you can use that as a checklist when going back to the property on settlement in case any rectification work needs to be conducted. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And why get? Why do I have to pay for um, a building report? Why does every buyer that comes through have to pay for a building report? Merely just for peace of mind. Uh, with any report that is not validated with the actual name of the client on the report, there is no claim. So for okay. reports that are conducted by the vendor and they don't have any other clients written on the report, they don't have a claim later down the track if they go to purchase the property. Okay, understand. Now tell me, what are the typical things, what, what are the typical things that you find when you are um, doing the building reports, the issues that most commonly occur? One major issue that we do find with a lot of homes built in Australia is dampness. Uh, now dampness later down the track can become an issue purely for the termite seller sector where uh, termites are actually attracted to homes with high moisture levels. Okay. So this also can be attracted from lack of ventilation within the subfloor and yep. lack of sunlight in and around the home. Okay. And when you see an issue, um, do you give some ideas on what has to be done to actually rectify it? Yes, we do. In our reporting system, we give a few handy tips that can be used as a preventative nature, yep. merely to, in fact, not allow that a problem to occur further down the track. Okay. And do you include quotes on fixing those problems or is that a separate issue? We prefer not to quote, merely just for a conflict of interest. Okay. We feel that it's better to get a handyman or a tradesman in to give the direct quote, just okay. in case the pricing is not accurate. Okay, okay, so if somebody is getting a building report with quotes um, for rectification, they probably should just stay away double, from it. Stay away from That's those right. reports. It can be okay. a little bit misleading. Yeah, okay, I can, yeah, I understand. And is there anything in particular that we should be looking for when we're reading the building report? Merely the structural defects, they're a little bit more concerning. Yep. However, other items such as hairline cracks, they can be just merely classified as a maintenance item right. and can be purely cosmetic as opposed to a structural defect. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all great advice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming in and clearing all that up. Thank you, Leanne.